Good afternoon. Last time we looked at our calculator and added parse trees and statements and the only statement that we added was a print statement so that we basically got back to the functionality that we'd had previously. Today we're going to look at adding assignments so that we can um, save values as we are calculating them and if we have time we might look a bit further. So in order to do assignments we're going to need another statement type and so let's define an assignment statement which is going to take an identifier which we know is a string and it's going to take an expression which uh, well we will evaluate there and then in order to assign it to our state so let's try parsing an assignment statement well we can parse assignment statements by doing something like having a reserved word of let's say let then an identifier then um, the reserved operator of equals and then an expression and then we can return an assignment statement of the identifier and the expression. Um, in order to actually parse it, we'll need to actually parse it. And oops, not expression, I meant assignment. So now we can parse our assignments. Let's just double check that. If we run our calculator, then we should be able to say let foo equal one. Now our interpret statement function is now failing, but at least we know that the parser worked. So if we find our interpret statement function, which is here, then we can actually see that Emacs is telling us that the pattern matches are non-exhaustive. So let's go and add our interpret statement for our assignment statement. Now we want to interpret the expression we've been given straight away because assignments should happen at the moment that uh, we run them and all we need to do is modify our state with m.insert of that constant value and we should be pretty much sorted. Um, Emacs is telling us indent, I meant ident, there we go that's looking good so we ought to be able to now run an assignment statement let foo equal one and can we print it out unknown identifier seems strange because well we know that our uh, state variable is this map of uh, values to expressions and we know that our uh, state map is there and that we've inserted our value with modify sorry we, with the modify m insert so what's gone wrong well what's gone wrong is that we're only running our calculator our eval state t line by line so every statement is being run in a new state so let foo equal one well that ran in a state assigned one to the value foo and then we finished that state then when we did print foo, we had a new state where foo did not exist. So what we're going to have to do is shuffle our calculation function around a little bit in order to lift all of the, uh, the reading of lines into our calculator monad. And then what we'll be able to do is make sure that assignments are operating properly. So we'll keep this calculate one value, but instead of being in IO, it's going to be in calculator. Let's therefore have a nice monadic function where we go, um, actually we don't even need do, we can carry on with the syntax as we are. We need to lift the error up into IO and we need to remove our eval state t from here. Now we need to write a full calculator function that's going to operate in our calculator monad and basically 
what calculator is going to do is it's going to do a lift IO of get contents in fact it's going to be exactly the same as our main function only with get context lifted up into our calculator and finally our main can then be an eval state t of our calculator function with our default variables if we now run our calculator and we let foo equal one and we print foo we're going to get our one out so we've extended our calculator with uh, the ability to perform a calculation instantaneously and save the value for use later for example if we say let foo equal one and then we say let bar equal foo plus one and then we let foo equal two if we print bar we still get two rather than three because we haven't uh, left our evaluation until late. This is great and it gives us an awful lot of functionality but what would happen if we wanted to add functions as well? So to add functions we're going to need to add an expression type for calling them so let's have a function invocation which is going to take the name of a function and an expression to pass as its argument. We're going to need a new data type for storing our functions which we'll call function body and it's going to take a string which is the name of its argument which we're going to bind for the duration of running the function and an expression to evaluate for it and we're going to need some kind of function definition statement which is going to take the name of a function to define the name of a, um, a variable to bind and an expression to evaluate for that function uh, in fact those last two are going to be a function body so step one oh, let me just add a deriving here just in case we want to print these things out step one is going to be to be able to parse a function invocation so a function invocation is a parser that returns an expression and it's going to be a an identifier and then it's going to be um, an expression which will be parenthesized and then we can return a function invocation of that ident over that expression now we need to be able to parse it and parse term is where that's going to happen The only problem that we're going to have is that parse function invocation is an identifier at the beginning, which is exactly the same as parsing a term. So we're just going to allow a little bit of backtracking with try there. So let's just uh, double check that we can successfully parse our function invocation terms. Run the calculator and so try saying print foo of bar. Excellent. The error non-exhaustive patterns in interpret expression implies that we can now read our functions out, which is brilliant. How about defining functions? Well, we've done print statements, we've done assignment statements. Let's do a function definition statement. So a parse function definition will be a parser of statements. and it's going to be a reserved word of uh, let's say def then an identifier then um, an arg name which is going to be a, a parenthesized expression which is a an identifier Ooh, that was tough then we're going to have an equals operator and then we're going to get an expression and we're going to return a, a function definition statement of the function name and then a function body of the arg name and the expression so that will let us define functions let's just double check that if we say def 
uh, double of n is n times 2. Uh, oh, unexpected because we haven't added it to our set of things to run. Parse function definition. Let's try that one again. Def double of n is n times 2. Non exhaustive patterns in interpret statement, which means that we've definitely been able to parse that as a statement and now we're trying to interpret it. This is brilliant. So let's move on to our interpreter and see what we can do. At the moment, our state is a map of strings to expressions. Unfortunately, we can't store a function body in an expression. At least, I don't want to be able to, and I didn't define it as such in our data structures. So first of all, we're going to change our uh, value in our map. So let's have a type of um, stored value. And that's going to be either a double or a function body because it's either a value, remember that every time we do a let we get a specific value, or it's going to be a function body. And let's just uh, change our calculator definition here, so we're talking about stored values. And finally um, we're going to have to just change our interpret expression here. And if we get any old function definition back, then let's fail with you must call function i. Uh, we've still got an error message here, cannot match expression with that. And the reason for that, I think, is going to be down here. So we don't insert constant n, we're going to insert left n. And our default variables need to be stored values, which of course means that instead of constants here, we need lefts. So apart from the fact that we can't deal with function invocations or function assignments, we should be back to where we were before. Let's just check that it runs. It does. And uh, if we enter our define statement again, then we're back to non-exhaustive patterns in interpret statement. And if we enter our call again, then we get back to non-exhaustive patterns in interpret expression. Excellent. And in fact, we can see that Emacs here has underlined interpret statement and it's underlined interpret expression to let us know that we've got this problem. So if we add an interpret expression for a function invocation of f n given e, then what are we going to do? Well, the first thing that we need to do is look up our function in our context. So let's get our current context and let's get our um, our function out of it. Case m dot lookup of function name in context. Now, if we get nothing, well, that's we're going to fail with unknown function. If we get a left of anything, then we're going to fail with cannot call constant that. And if we get a right of function body of arg name and expression, then we're on to a winner here, so we can do. Now, uh, if we're going to manage this, we need to bind the value of our incoming expression. So let's do that now. Interpret expression E. We're going to modify our context with our argument name and that value. We are going to now evaluate our return value. And because it makes sense to, let's then remove our argument name from the map. So let's modify with m.remove, I believe, of argname. 
and then let's return oh, expressions are always numbers so return r now we've got a red line here not in scope m dot remove so if we go back to hoogle is we want a function that takes a key and it takes a map of key to anything and it gives us back a map of key to anything and it's actually called delete so there we go delete delete a key and its value from the map so we don't want remove we want delete good we can now interpret function calls so the final thing that we need to do is interpret our function construction so if we do that interpret statement function definition function name and body well this is going to be really easy it's just going to be modify m dot insert function name write body and we've got no more red lines so let's have a go if we define double of n as n times 2 and then we print double of 12 we get 24 and if we now print n we should get unknown identifier so basically we have our, our very very basic function definitions and they're working we can't recurse usefully uh, which means that we can't generate functions like Fibonacci and the reason for that is that we have no con no conditionals and therefore no way to terminate the recursion and get our answer back next time we'll look at doing that for now though uh, I will uh, push this to the git server the URL for which will be in the description below don't forget to subscribe comment with ideas like the video etc I will see you next time bye bye